spins on the ball. In case of top spin, you want to brush across the top of the ball. Under spin, you want to brush across, across the bottom of the ball or side of the ball. All right. What's happening with the strings and the ball? People are always talking about how many pounds do you string your racket? All right. They've heard about the elasticity of the strings and so on. Do you want to make it really tight? Is that going to give you a higher velocity? exit velocity for the ball? Probably not. Think about it this way. If we tighten these strings up so much that it was sort of like a wooden paddle, what happens when you hit a ball with a wooden paddle? Not very good. The ball is going to squish against the paddle. You'll get more control, but you won't have a higher exit velocity than that you were, were hoping to get. So the string, we're going to have tension in the strings. What happens with the strings? We can demonstrate here, got a little fabric, sort of looks like the string bed, and I'm going to simply put it around this container. All right, here we go, ready? And tie it tighter. So what happens is I'll tie it really tight here, and we will rebound the ball off of this, and you probably can hear the sound. Okay, so kind of bounce, bounces there. And we'll make it tighter and tighter, and you'll hear the frequency get higher and higher as I go. Okay, a little bit tighter here. Hopefully I can do this without ruining this. Tighter and tighter. All right, let's do it one more time here. This is really tight, sort of like a drum. Okay. You can hear it got higher frequency. Well, what happens here, this is a little bit different than the string bed of a racket. What happens is the ball comes in, hits the string bed, and the string bed will deform, all right? So there's a deformation of the string bed. There's also a deformation of the ball, all right? At high enough velocity, this ball is going to deform as well. So what happens is the string bed deforms, and you get this kind of a trampoline effect, all right? The tighter this string bed is, you get less of a trampoline effect. So the exit velocity will be lower for the tighter string bed than for the looser string bed. If you want a higher velocity forehand, you better have a lower poundage on your strings, all right? Versus higher poundage on your strings, you'll get more control. Why do you get more control? Well, you get more control because now, like with the wooden paddle, the ball hits the high tension st string bed and compresses, right, collapses onto the bed, and there's more friction with the ball and the string bed. So you're going to get a greater contact with the ball and the string bed. So when you're brushing up against the ball, right, whether it be top spin or underspin, there's going to be a greater area of contact. So you have what we call more control. All right, so that would be good for, say, a lot of hard hitters. They don't need a lot of velocity from the racket, elasticity, more so they need control. Tighter tension on the strings would be good for them. For you people that are involved with, I say you have arm problems, and you're saying, geez, how can I get some higher velocity off of the racket? Well, then have a lower tension string bed, right? You're not going to have as great a control, although people will debate about that as well, but you'll have lesser control but greater velocity. So it's up to you as to what you want to do. Okay, about the racket. The racket has moments of inertia. Actually, it has three moments of inertia. It has a twisting moment of inertia. I'm sure you feel this when the ball is hitting away from a sweet spot, you'll, you'll see a, ten, a torsion or torque twisting in the racket. So that's one of its moments of inertia. 
It has an in-plane moment of inertia. If I were to throw this racket up, it would spin this way. And it also has the so-called swing weight moment of inertia, an out-of-plane moment of inertia. All right? And moments of inertia, for example, we can see this with molecules. Here I've got a water molecule. I've got the oxygen atom. I've got two hydrogen atoms. I don't know if you can see this as well with the white backdrop. Let's put this up with the black backdrop here. Here we have three moments of inertia for the water molecule. This is one of its moments of inertia, right? We saw this with the twisting, right? So the tennis racket, same thing, has a twisting moment of inertia, right? We twist, we turn the tennis racket with our arm. Same thing here with the water molecule. Second moment of inertia for the water molecule, all right? Here we go. Let's take a look. Here we've got the moment of inertia that's out of plane, all right? So here, see what I do here? I'll see if I can get this to swing, all right? So there you go. So there's its second moment of inertia, all right? See how I do that? Kind of an end over end. And finally, I have the third moment of inertia, all right? So here we go. You ready? And this is the so-called in-plane moment of inertia that I talked about with the tennis racket. So there are three moments of inertia. So you can do this with water molecules or tennis rackets. So let's go back to the tennis racket. All right, moments of inertia. People have trouble with control, right? So they're going to want to understand the concept of moments of inertia. If you're one of those players that has difficulty when a ball isn't really hitting the sweet spot of the racket, you're hitting off the sweet spot, and you get a lot of torque, you may want to put some weights on the sides of the racket, some tape, all right, some weighted tape on the sides. In this case, it will be more difficult for this racket to turn, all right? You are changing its moment of inertia. You can think of a moment of inertia in this respect as, say, two weights that are held far apart from you. The further they're held apart from you, the bigger your moment of inertia. The closer the weights are held to you, the smaller moment of inertia. Here, it would take a greater torque to turn me. Here, it would take a lesser torque to turn me, okay? So if you wanted to make sure your racket's not turning or torquing as much, have some weights on the sides of the rackets so the tendency will be less of a turn due to the bigger moment of inertia, all right? As far as the swing weight is concerned, this can be changed as well. Some people like to put weighted tape at the top. They find they, that they get, especially with the serve, they feel, and again, tennis is a game of feel, they feel that they're getting more power from this, all right? I don't always agree. Sometimes you just have to go out there and see what works for, for you. But as far as the physics is concerned, you are going to change the moment of inertia, all right? As far as this moment of inertia is concerned, I don't really know if you'd be all that interested in it, but every time you hit a tennis ball, all three moments of inertia are operating, all right? The swing weight, this in-plane moment of inertia, and the twisting or polar moment of inertia. They are all in operation. All right. The tennis racket, like the dumbbell, has a center of mass. And you can examine moments of inertia, all right, by taking a look at the center of mass of the, of the tennis ball. So here it's easy to see where the tennis, or excuse me, where the dumbbell has its center of mass. With other objects, it's perhaps a little more difficult, but not too difficult. Here we have a baseball bat, and I see that this moment of inertia is about where this trans, uh, where this uh, neon colored tape is, all right, neon green, all right? And we can see the moment of inertia is there just by spinning this bat. So I can turn this bat, if I get it to spin fast enough, you can see that its center of mass, all right, 
really is that, that fluorescent tape, right? So there you go. So everything has a sense of that. So too does the penetrant. And you can examine the moments of inertia with an understanding of the center of mass of the tennis racket. Okay, so I'll see you in the next segment. We'll be talking about serving and how you can add velocity to your serve, the power serve, with Dr. Bones. See you then.